Hello, welcome back to the Luminous Life. Today I've got just a quick recap and review of episode one, the premiere episode of Sisterhood of Hip Hop that premiered on Tuesday, August 12th. Um, I should have had this video for you guys yesterday, but technical difficulties got the best of me. So here it is today. Um, so this episode was just your basic you know, run-of-the-mill premiere episode um, when it comes to a reality show where they just give you the overview, kind of a gener generic generic kind of um, description of everybody and their history and who they are, what they do, that kind of thing. Um, they didn't really get too deep off into a whole lot because it's just your first episode. And a lot of these girls, a lot of us don't know. So that's just what it was so I'm just gonna kind of go through and um, talk a little bit about each person and who they are and what they do and that's just kind of gonna kind of be the review for this episode and as the season goes on and we learn a little bit more about each girl I'll have more to tell you and more um, opinions I guess for you guys but right now it's just kind of gonna be who's on the show and why Okay, so Sisterhood of Hip Hop, um, I'm going to read you the description that Oxygen has, but it says, Welcome to the Sisterhood. The first episode of Sisterhood of Hip Hop introduces us to five talented, fierce young women, um, Saya, Bia, Naima Supreme, Diamond, and Brianna Perry, and they break, as they break through barriers and stereotypes to take over hip hop. Um, check out what happened on episode one. So you can watch, so side note, you can watch episode one online at oxygen.com. I will link the, hopefully I'll be able to link the video, like episode one in the description. Um, you can watch episode one and I think that Oxygen, after each episode premieres on TV, you get the opportunity to watch it online. I'm just like, you know, a lot of other network shows and networks do about their shows. They put it up after the show premieres. So it is out now. So I'll link it in the description. So first they introduce us to Saya, who is an openly gay rapper out of Bedford Stuyvesant, New York. Um, yeah, so she's from New York. I think she's 27, 26, 27. Um, she's been rapping since she was like 12. Um, she says that she, you know, lived that New York kind of, that life. And music and rap saved her. You know what I mean? She could have been doing anything. She could have, you know, been dead. And music saved her life, like literally. So, that's awesome. So, yeah. She's the only openly gay artist I know of. Well, no, that's that's a lie. She's the only openly gay artist I know of that is like of her caliber. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, there's plenty of them out there. There's like Temper. There's um, Nice. There's like, the, what is it? The Rainbow. Those girls are pretty known, you know, especially on YouTube. But there's plenty of like openly gay female rappers out there. It's just that she's like the first of her kind to be like on this big kind of national level you know to have a show and all of that kind of stuff so I think that that is awesome 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 um like on the show so on the show she goes to like the breakfast club and they asked her they were like well are you gonna she was like yeah <laughs> like she didn't have no problem admitting that to them you know what I'm saying like that's, that's who she is so I mean why is she gonna lie so also in the first little part of the show we learn or we meet her girlfriend Renee which when I read her name I thought it was Renaye and so through the whole show when they showed her I was like oh that's no that's Saya's girlfriend Renaye but it's obviously pronounced Renee but when you read it it's Renaye and that I might reference her as Renaye because I'm joking. Okay, I'm joking. I know her name is Renee. So Saya and her girlfriend are moving from LA to New York for Saya to, you know, uh, pursue her career. Renee, from from this moment, I knew that Renee was gonna flip the script sooner or later. And later on in the show, we learn when and why she does beautiful girl the only thing about renee like look wise kind of physically that irks me is that big ass like dark matter 
kind of kind of tattoo she got on her neck it's just so big and black and 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 I don't I don't get it okay now Saya has a neck tattoo it's big it goes from like 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 throat to 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 chest and around you know what I'm saying it's like I think it's a skull and like some kind of design and it looks good because it's like a whole piece you know what I'm saying if you're gonna go big go big right Renee got this like big thing like something that's just like growing it's ugly and I don't like it so each person on the show has a kind of mentor or somebody that either discovered them or is like kind of showing them the ropes and being that mentor that voice for them and kind of putting them on right so Tank actually discovered or is putting Saya on right Saya also has like kind of an issue <laughs> with Tank like she you know she appreciates him and you know it but it's like she has issues like getting in contact with him and kind of like keeping him focused on like her and you know she's like I got I, I want to work you know what I'm saying I want to get in the studio I want to you know perform I want to make this music but I can't get a hold of this man and so you see her try and call Tank and it goes to his voicemail and she's like I hate that fucking voicemail like for this to be a man that is like glued to his phone and I can't contact him like something ain't right so so also in this episode we meet Naima Supreme who is a rapper from New York City and um I first heard of Naima Supreme via Kid Fury um I always link Kid Fury in the description because at the end of my videos I kind of mimic his acronyms that he does on the read um so always always check him out he's always constantly linked, linked in the description so shout out to Kid Fury for putting me on Naima Supreme she's good like she's really good you know what I'm saying and she's pretty okay um so Naima Supreme is kind of your total package performer um she dances she obviously she raps she sings she does a little bit of everything and she's she's kind of good she's actually very good so that's dope um she mentions that she is not looking for a man that she is all about her career right now so that's a no-no boy she ain't looking for you she looking for that money okay and this opportunity to blow up so she ain't really looking for y'all niggas <laughs> Also in this episode, we meet Brianna Perry. So, I can't remember ever hearing about her. And if I did, I didn't remember. And that is no shade. Like, no shade at all. It's just that, like, I don't... She's not, like, something that's like someone that's, like, forefront of my mind at the moment. So, it's awesome that I get to learn about her. and get to kind of, you know, discover a little bit about her myself. So, on the show, on this episode especially, we learned that... Brianna Perry is, you know, juggling a career in the rap industry, in the music industry. She's juggling her family life and her personal life. And she is also in school, like a real life university, like accreditation and all of that, right? Books and calculators, all of that. She is in real life school, okay, and focused on her education as well. And I give her props, like... Brianna Perry, like, do it, do it, do it, okay? Um, she's pretty much, like, role model-wise for female MCs, like, trying to come up. She's probably the best role model you could have because, you know, she's doing a little bit of everything, but she's also still trying to get her education because she understands that that's important. Um, and she's taking a full course load. I'm pretty sure she's from Miami, don't get me wrong, but I'm pretty sure she's from Miami, and I think she goes to University of Miami. I just, I just think that that is so, so dope, right? You also see in this episode with Brianna that her and her mama Kiki, or <laughs> Kiki twice. I actually kind of love that nickname. <laughs> like, if my name was Kiki, I would want somebody to call me Kiki twice, because I just think that that is too funny. But you see them kind of clash a little bit, right? Um because Kiki or Kiki twice is Brianna's mom but she's also Brianna's manager and this season we are gonna see that kind of struggle okay 
um, kind of come up a little bit more. But I can definitely tell in this episode that Brianna wants her mama. Okay? She just wants her mama to be her mama and not her manager. And I'm sure we are going to learn more about that later on in the season. And um, So next we meet Bia. Who has got swag. Um, she keeps talking about this hot 16 that she, you know, rode or spit for Pharrell. And that she says that, you know, Pharrell told her, or was going to put her on a song, right? And Pharrell told her to write a hot 16. <laughs> Pharrell told her to write a hot 16. And if he liked it and it was good, he would keep it in the song or put it on the song. And if it was bad, then it's trash and he's moving on, right? Apparently the 16 was hot, but I can't find the 16 nowhere. Um, don't really care to. I just, out of all the girls, she's probably my least like the one I'm least interested in um, and the one I'm like least interested in seeing and really don't care about like she just doesn't she doesn't really do it for me she's not anything interesting to me or anyone interesting to me that could change but from this episode I could honestly care less and that is no shade but that shade yeah she she, she got signed to Pharrell so she, that 16 must have been hot but be a Girl, I ain't heard you rap yet. I don't... What do you sound like? Who are you? How about be a skin, though? <laughs> so there's another girl on YouTube, and she does, like, uh, reviews and, like, topic videos and stuff like that. I'll link, link her in the description as well. Her name is Ashley Miller. Sorry if it's not Miller, but I know it's Ashley. But um, she said probably the dopest thing ever that after this show is done, that Bia needs to hit up Pro Proactive and get her a little deal okay put the hip-hop industry put the hip-hop game on to to proactive okay because that girl's skin is angry okay i can't talk you know what i'm saying i got you know my battles with adult acne um you know the acne is under control it's the acne scars that i'm working on right now um, my skin is clear and it's smooth but I've got, you know, some acne scarring and some hyperpigmentation issues that I'm dealing with. But I'm also not in the public eye like she is or like she's going to be. So, girl, get put on with Proactive. You never know. Okay. So, next, we are introduced to Diamond. Now, I know who Diamond was from Crime Mob. Okay, nook if you buck. Um, now, Crime Mob broke up a oh, woo. Ooh, ooh, years ago um, for various reasons um, but I think she and Princess from Crime Mob are the only ones that are like still working you know and putting out stuff solo so I don't know the last thing I remember hearing from Diamond was a song called um, uh, Got a Lot of Money or Lot of Money I think it's called Lot of Money um, but that's the last thing I heard from Diamond and that was maybe two years ago maybe maybe over a year for sure but probably close to two years ago um if she's been putting out stuff recently i haven't heard it but apparently she's been working still but um a lot of us um uh, more recently know diamond from the drama with her and look little scrappy from little scrappy <laughs> from but from uh loving hip-hop you know, Mama D son, the the prince, the prince of the South, or whatever his name, his little name is. But um, you know, they used to date, and uh, apparently he cheated on Erica Dixon with her, um, and she also dated more recently Soldier Boy. Girl, why? But. You know, we know her more recently for the drama that she's been involved in, but I don't, I honestly feel like if she can get past, you know, this drama and kind of leave it where it's at, she could be big and she could be very, very, very successful and much more known, you know, much more known than she is now. I just think that 
if she can get past this this drama and this kind of bad rep that she's developed from dating these niggas she she do really really good um so her uh, mentor is uh Lil John I'm not sure if how long she's known Lil John but apparently it's been for a long time um probably from back in her crime mob days but Lil John says probably the most genius thing ever and he says that you need to get you like a regular everyday kind of good guy okay I get you a guy that work at the post office and you know just kind of chill with these rappers like you don't need no rapper I feel the same way okay get you a girl get you a man that works hard that get his hands dirty and that come homes and come come homes come home at night and just want to cuddle that's what you need you don't need these rappers and they mamas and tattoos on their face like that ain't what you need just get you a postal worker get you a guy that work at fedex okay and uh ain't nothing wrong with a guy that work at fedex okay they got money they got um benefits <laughs> just get a regular just get a regular dude okay get a dude with somebody don't, don't nobody know and you'll be all right there's something genius as well uh she's when she's talking about her you know ex scrappy she says that you know he was abusive whether it be verbally or physically um, that he was broke <laughs> and he was a cheater Obvi first of all obviously he was a cheater because he cheated on his baby mama you know his girlfriend would chew so obviously but she says you can't be she says you're not gonna be abusive broke and a cheater well at least you know your boundaries okay she says that that is over Ha! We'll see because she said her and Soldier Boy was over, but we see a scene from like another episode of her going to visit uh, Soldier Boy in the studio, talking about what you been doing. Mhm. Mm Little John says, "Keep it classy, no drama." But I just I hope she takes his 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 uh suggestion because. Girl, your track record ain't too good with the menses. One thing about Diamond that runs in her family is beauty. All of those women's are beautiful. I think she has like three or four sisters and two brothers, one or two brothers. Um, but one thing that runs in the family is beauty and they all look like they mama. Now I'm not sure if all of them have the same father because um, in the show, they, she goes to visit her mom's house, and there's a man there, and that's her mom's husband, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that that's not Diamond's dad, because Diamond's dad is Puerto Rican. Um, and you can look that up, and you sh can find that information anywhere, but Diamond is half black, half Puerto Rican, and that man was a black man from Georgia. All of those girls like look exactly alike. Like look just like they mama. Like you can't lie and say that ain't your mama. You can say that might not be your daddy, but that's your mama. Like through and through. So like her house smelled like pie and cornbread and um, like Salisbury steak and um, greens and like two kinds of kool-aid i felt like it smelled like just good food like it looked like and it just kind of the feeling i got from it was good food and if my phone don't stop ringing jesus i just felt like it smelled like good food maybe it's because i'm i was hungry and i'm hungry now but it just i assumed that there was some cooking going on okay that there's always cooking going on. Um, so Diamond mentions to Lil John, but she also mentions to her family that she's wanting to, you know, kind of move from Atlanta uh, to New York to pursue the industry, and that's where the the bigger labels and opportunities, and you know, uh, you know, she just needs that experience from from New York. Um, so her family is supportive, and they're behind her one hundred percent. Um, they obviously 
you know they don't want her to go but they know she kind of has to to kind of build this you know this brand and her brand and kind of get a little more opportunity and they know they know it's out there but they obviously don't want her to leave and also like that's where she got started you know what i'm saying like all her crime mob fans all her diamond fans are in atlanta you know like the base of them is in atlanta so so also in this episode we see saya kind of show renee around her old neighborhood and you know talk about her family life a little bit and so in this episode we see uh uh saya take renee to queen of the ring um which is a rap battle that is based in new york city i'm not sure if they have it anywhere else but i know that for sure it is like consistent in new york city um but all is well all is well until um naima supreme comes in so it's understood that um naima and saya are friends and it's quite obvious that that's all they are um because like you can kind of tell um sexual tension you know you can see it but you can also feel it and i ain't feel that i felt like a pure friendship um you know pure like acquaintance or friendship between naima and uh saya like that's what you saw and that's kind of the feeling you got from it but Renee was like real stank towards Naima if, but good good job Naima for keeping your head cool um but so Naima walks or uh so Saya calls Naima down and she's like come over come over Naima comes over and you know Saya's like Naima this is my girlfriend Renee Renee this is my friend Saya and and Renee's like ugh like she had this like stank ass look and I'm just, oof, I'm proud of Naima for not knocking that, hair, that girl head off. But I go from zero to 100, nigga, real quick. Um, <laughs> but that's when the mood changed. It went from, like, all fine and dandy and, like, just having a good time to just attitude. And Naima is just like, okay, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because... Baby, Renee, don't nobody want your girl but you. No, well, nobody in that room <laughs> wanted your girl but you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure that Naima is straight. And like she said, you know, in the show, she's not looking for a man. A man. So she don't want your girl. Like, that's they friends. That's all it is. So I didn't, I didn't really understand that. But Renee, and that's when the attitude kind of really really came out and like i said the mood went from 10 to about a two you know naima and Sire are like talking and renee's just like whatever you know what i'm saying like she didn't even give it a chance to get to know Sire or even like introduce herself but just show attitude and shade and so renee's like i'm not happy i want to go home and not yeah renee renee was like i want not happy i want to go home and so i was like what are you talking about what do you mean and she's like i want to go home i want to go home to cali and i'm like are you that jealous you want to go home or is this like something that's been building up and it just kind of came out right now and so saya says to renee she's like why is it or what is it that when things aren't on you you get upset and i was like oh say it because you said what everybody was thinking okay and and she was like what's wrong with you why why is it that when you know it ain't about you that you get mad you know and and renee goes renee had the nerve <laughs> but renee goes to sire she's like you're being very dramatic you're being so dramatic i'm like um actually boo you're the one being dramatic. Saya is trying to trying to figure it all out. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out what the bigger issue is with them. But in the later seasons, you see, or in later seasons, in the later episodes of this season, you're gonna see like uh, Naima's relationship with her mother and what the issues are there. You're gonna see um, Brianna kind of 
explain to her mama that like hey i need you mom i don't need you manager okay and i think that that is like so like great of her to just kind of be open and honest like i need a mother not a manager more you know more importantly i need a mother not a manager so it's gonna be interesting to see that relationship develop um to see their careers individually overall develop and grow and that's gonna be interesting um like i said bia i don't really see it for her she's not really interesting to me yet but we'll see um what else the that whole thing between saya and renee like their relationship and yeah renee is spoiled as fuck and you know saya love the girl okay they met on instagram so you can't you can't expect too much but you know what i mean they've been together long enough that you know they know each other and they know each other how each other works but i don't see it for renee i don't really like her but it's just her attitude for her to be so pretty and i'm sure so talented because i understand that she does like modeling and i think she does like makeup or hair or something like that um, but to be so pretty your attitude is so ugly but it's gonna be interesting it's just definitely gonna be interesting i'm excited about diamond i'm a big diamond fan um first of all i love that purple hair it's dope and it's cute okay it don't look like these ratchet thought bitches out here dying their hair blue and looking like um a mess but it's very very cute and put together the only thing i don't like is when she does her makeup like real dark in the eyes and make her look kind of sick but she's still very pretty all of them are cute they're all cute girls b is even cute it's just her skin is just angry and we're working on it okay i'm gonna work with bia on her skin but so far it seems like it's going to be interesting and uh we'll see we'll see um so i hope you enjoyed that little recap and you learned a little bit of something about each of these girls um i'm excited to see the rest of the season and see how everything unfolds and develops and yeah um so here's some news so i put up a video yesterday about the upcoming um recaps and reviews that i'm going to be doing which is going to be for this show um sisterhood of hip-hop and also for preachers of la season two um so preachers of la season two premieres next week on the 20th um next wednesday on the 20th and you should have a recap hopefully that night maybe um the next day uh and the other reason why i'll have that one on time is because i'm probably gonna film it this weekend because episode one of season two is up online on oxygen.com now i don't know how long it's gonna be there before you know prior to the premiere of episode one season two episode one so i'm gonna link in the description i want you guys to check it out um because i'm not sure if they're gonna take it down for the premiere on tv and then put it back up or if they're gonna leave it up and you know after every episode they'll put it up online uh and i'll try to link it in every video that i recap but you can watch episode one of season two of preachers of hip-hop preachers of hip <laughs> but you can watch episode one of season two of preachers of la right now online on oxygen.com so definitely check that out so you can maybe get a get a little bit ahead but if not, I will see you guys next Wednesday for episode two's recap of Sister of Hip Hop. And I'll see you guys next Thursday for um, episode one, season two, Preachers of LA recap. So, hope you guys enjoyed um, all of my links for everywhere that I am at so that you can lurk me on on the interwebs is down below. Find me on Instagram and Twitter at Kidluminosity. Find me on Facebook at The Luminous Life. Um, 
I also have a second Twitter which is mainly like updates on the channel and things that I'm doing um, business wise um, that is at luminosity on Twitter uh, that's pretty much oh she stay hungry dot um, yeah so I'm all over the internet if you can't find me send me a private message on YouTube I'll figure out how to read it um, <laughs> My business inquiry uh, email is down below. That is killamnasty.gmail.com if you ever need to contact me for some reason. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. I hope you guys are happy and you did something successful today. Um, let's see. Our acronym, inspired by Kid Fury. That's Kid Fury with one R. Not Kid Fury, but Kid Fury. And uh, also his links are always in the description, but um, let's see what the acronym could be. I forgot I, I forgot to eat my lunch today. So sponsored by my lunch that I didn't eat um, is gonna be F T E N. Fuck thoughts, eat nuggets. Bye.